Cool guys, well, welcome to, I was going to say, another <laughs> name of another vlog, but we're not called According to His Word, so that's a free shout out for Matt and Matt for their, their vlog. Yeah. Uh, so we're actually going to restart this thing, uh, which didn't really become a thing in the first place, uh, and we're going to call it Preston Transformed. Uh, we want to see Preston transformed by the message about Jesus, that's all about the gospel going out, isn't it? And you boys, in various different ways, have been instrumental in seeing that happen so uh it's cool actually that the, with the first time that we're talking about something we're actually uh involving loads of people who are part of that so uh we've just had a barbecue today so i'm really sweaty and yeah. smell you know we all smell like smoke don't we yeah yeah uh, yeah. It's all over the yeah yeah but uh basically we wanted to discuss a, a gospel coalition article uh called the false gospel of self-forgiveness mm. let me just make sure that we've got the right one otherwise people are going to be like i cannot find it uh, yeah, so the Gospel Coalition say there is no category of self-forgiveness in the Bible and then, ah, oh, there we go. Uh, the actual say. article itself is say no to the Gospel of self-forgiveness, which is a fantastic article and yeah. we really like it. It's mm -hmm. excellent. Uh, some, of the, some of it maybe might word it a little bit different, but the overall uh, thrust of the article was really good. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, we thought it was good. However, we just wanted to look a little bit at the responses that it received on Facebook because often the comments that articles receive are as significant as the article themselves because they demonstrate how uh, a culture, or in this case a uh, subcategory of the culture, kind of Christian mm -hmm. evangelicals generally who read those articles, uh, receive what the article, set, article said. Yeah. So in the article, uh, it was talking about how really there's no examples in the Bible of somebody needing to forgive themselves. Mm -hmm. And mm. that while uh, people often think that that's a fundamental aspect of forgiveness, uh, they, uh, that's something that they were taking exception with or taking issue with. So have you always got any comments first before I read some of the article out, what you thought of it? That's true. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I just, I, I, again, I just uh, affirm the, the trueness of it and actually that, you know, it's, it's really important to think about considering how much in the current kind of Christian world, it's kind of preached a lot and people don't really realise it. Like, I right. definitely remember the whole kind of, um, oh, you must be like, oh, you need to forgive yourself before God can forgive you kind of thing. That you'd hear Do you have people say that to you? I've had that happen to me once. Oh, well, right. Okay. Um, and I was just like, oh, dear, yeah, it's just not true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, we see in the Bible, there's a need to rest in Christ's forgiveness, okay. uh, not, not in your own. Um, and I think often when people say, I just can't forgive myself, they're actually making themselves a, a higher standard of righteousness than God's. Because mm, yeah, yeah. it's saying that, like, well, well, the king of kings can forgive my sins, but I, the mighty, yeah. the arbiter of right and wrong, cannot. And it, yeah. that's sort of, sort of the attitude that comes across is mm. they think, and it's almost saying to that God isn't just <laughs> in forgiving yeah. them, but they, yeah. but, so it's, uh, it actually shows a lack of faith in God's justice, which is when people say they can't forgive themselves if they're in Christ. Mm. Um, on a stress that you throw in Christ sorry yeah. about that yeah so. cool so we've got into a lot of things already there haven't we and kind mm. of uh, objections to it uh, let's let's kind of look at what the article says and then we will uh, look at some of the responses to it and mm. then kind of pull it apart because mm -hmm. uh, this is what this is something it said in the article I have good news such good news you don't need to forgive yourself because you can't forgive yourself and then they say, I know this, sound, this answer sounds foreign. Our contemporary therapeutic culture tells us that self-forgiveness is not only a category of forgiveness, it's actually the most important of them all. So right in Psychology Today, psychotherapist Beverly Engel says, I believe that self-forgiveness is the most powerful step you can take to rid yourself of debilitating shame. And then the Gospel Coalition writer says, but here's the vital question for Christians. Can you point to one example in scripture of someone forgiving themselves and they go on they say there's no category of self-forgiveness in the bible and what a freeing truth your shame and guilt does not depend on your f ability to forgive yourself so to understand what they're saying there there's a whole like world of understanding of what the gospel is and how jesus sets people free and that kind of thing which we need to chat about don't we but yeah, yeah. let's just look at some of the comments uh that were made i'm going to look at there's one particular one pulled out here uh, this person says some good stuff at the start. They say, self, it's a long post, but self-forgiveness is not an act of self-atonement or self-redemption. Mm. This would be blasphemy, and I believe it is what the author meant to criticise. So, great, that, that's good that this person's getting that. Mm. And they go on, they say, we know that salvation only exists through the sacrifice of Christ. Uh, and then they quote Acts 4.12. Uh, so, you know, this, this, it's good that they're, they're trying to get to the Bible and, 
Mm. But let, I want us to read the next bit and then we're going to kind of think it through a little bit. So instead, self-forgiveness is the act of banishing our own darkness and allowing the light of truth to flood our minds and hearts. This is why it's so important. There were two good things there. Well, two things there. One not good. The other one good. One good thing is uh, allowing the light of truth to flood our minds and hearts. Mm. So yeah. that's that's essential, isn't it? That's yeah. what the call of the gospel yeah. is. It's like repent and believe. So to believe it is to actually receive this truth, allow God's truth, what Jesus has done yeah. in t forgiving us all of our sins to uh, reshape our minds, uh, allow it to illuminate all of us and change how we see things. That's really good. Mm. But the first bit, instead, self-forgiveness is the act of banishing our own darkness. And that's the that's the that's the step, isn't it? Where you've got to yeah. go right. Okay, what what does the Bible actually lead me to expect there? And it's interesting over and over again in the comments, uh, people who are defending the idea of self forgiveness will 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 say we need to release ourselves from, or in this case, the, it's banishing our own darkness. Mm. And I, I, I wonder because there's going to be people listening to what we're saying, Jen. So we've got to recognise that there's deep pain that people feel mm. and like some of us have experienced that pain yeah. uh and in this case when it comes to self-forgiveness because of uh the things that we've done wrong so for our own sin and we have deep regret uh and we recognize that we were really wrong and so i'm aware that people might be listening in and saying well wait like don't you care about that like mm. does the writer of this article not care do you guys not care and we do care about that don't we yeah we yeah. do care about that but the question is how how does how does our own darkness get banished? I suppose that's the question, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it's as well to do with the um, yeah I, th I think a, a lot of it's to do with the the fact that the that we're not going to be you know there's no way that we can banish our own our own darkness you know apart from God and I think you know it's important not to to kind of take that as something we can do. We need to make sure that when we're doing things that we're doing it in God's strength. Right. Yeah. Uh, rather than our own, um, and I think you know, it, it comes with a knowledge of of what God has done for us and the grace that He's given us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and also the the effect that our sin has. So rather than thinking, oh right, I've sinned against that person, l l like David when when um, he saw that when he sinned, he he had sinned against God. Absolutely. And so if, yeah. if you know, r rather than saying. Yeah. Oh, I've done this person to this person. They haven't forgiven me. Mm. But actually, it's not them that we need to go for, to forgiveness for necessarily. And like that yeah. might be useful as well. But yeah. but the, the really important forgiveness comes from God. Yeah. So yeah, right. so yeah. you know. Good. But with an understanding of you know the effect that sin has, then actually that can be quite liberating if we know mm. that we're forgiven for that if we're in Christ. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so I think yeah. I think kind of the you know if you if you're overly concerned with sort of forgiving yourself, then maybe it kind of comes from a, um, a sort of a, comes from quite an emotional sort of place. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think we need to kind of put more sort of, more more of our sort of faith and our stock in, in what God's done for us rather than mm -hmm. how we feel at the time. Yeah, yeah. totally. That, that, and that's it, isn't it, really? Because there's, just speaking of David there, like against you and you alone have I sinned. He, he considers his sin, even though it was against Bathsheba and Uriah, sin is fundamentally there against God, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. The, there is another party that, that he sinned against that he might, he might need to seek, or we might need to seek forgiveness from. But whether they forgive us or not, ultimately the question is, does God forgive me? Yeah. And if, mm -hmm. and if, if God has forgiven me, and cr if I'm a Christian, I'm in Christ, which means that Jesus has taken away all of my sins, that he has forgiven me, if God's forgiven me, if I need to seek to forgive myself, if I need to go through a process of self-forgiveness, it's like there's this other God which I've put in place yeah. who I need to appease or meet the standard of uh, or have the permission of. And actually that God is myself. I've yeah. put myself in that position of... I need... Essentially it's like saying that I've got a higher standard than God, mm. which is deeply, deeply wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, and, yeah, go on, Matt. So I was just saying, it's like, it, I think the first thing, you know, the banishing my darkness, and like, if I forgive myself, well, well, and then making the work of Christ pointless, because, you know, we see in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, he made him who knew no sin to be sin. Mm. And, and they're not recognising, well, actually, their, their darkness is already banished. It's been borne by Christ. And obviously, yeah. in First yeah. Peter 2, describes how he bore our sins inside his 
body. And so mm. actually, the, well, the darkness has already banished. If you're in Christ, then your sin has been taken from mm. you and put onto Christ, and you are now righteous, attributed to, you know, God has given you his righteousness. So it's a failure to recognise that actually you're righteous in, in the sight of God, obviously not by your own works, but by the work of Christ. Yeah. And then I think, secondly, it's an act of pride. You know, as you were saying, yeah. you know, you're making yourself as God, because you're saying, I can't believe I did this terrible thing, which means that you're not believing that you're truly depraved in your sin and you're mm. sort of thinking that you're better than your yeah. action. Yeah. And so it's an act of pride that shows you probably yeah. don't actually recognise the, the sinfulness of your heart and your own condition. Yeah, yeah that's so. right, that's right. And this should be this is actually really encouraging for those of us who re, who struggle emotionally uh, with the sin that we've committed yeah. and who mm. think of how much we've screwed up, how wrong we are, how sinful we are. Because it means that forgiveness isn't something that fundamentally happens in here uh, mm. and, and starts here. It's actually something that, that starts and was finished on the cross. That It happened outside me, that Christ bore the punishment that I should have had. And that's where forgiveness wasn't just made possible, but actually was achieved by Christ. Yeah. Uh, that He actually made that happen. And it, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere. like I know some of you guys will get sick of me going to this <laughs> section, but I'm going to go to Colossians again. Uh, and we're going to read some of... Uh, some of Colossians because it, it's uh, Paul's basically like challenging people who think that there's this other stuff that you need as well as the message about Jesus you really need you know you need the, these particular spiritual experiences or uh, to be uh, seemingly worshipping angels and mm. possibly having this additional knowledge that you, some people do have and some don't we don't know exactly what's the whole backstory there but Paul's pushing back against wrong teaching and he says of Jesus uh, that he had forgiven us all our trespasses. This is Colossians 2.13. He had forgiven us all our trespasses by cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Uh, and then he goes on and he explains how that actually that has, uh, that has effects on the cosmic powers of darkness as well. He, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Even the enemy, even the devil, isn't able to bring an accusation against God's people now because Christ has won. Uh, but then what it does is it flows into a bit where uh, where Paul's basically saying, like, don't let people judge you based on this or that, these particular ceremonies you observe or festivals or feasts. Uh, but then he goes on a little bit and he talks about different regulations that put people put in place to try to uh, control their own sin. And he talks about how those, those things have no value in actually doing that. And then he flows into this amazing bit here. The qu question is, in... in Anywhere in Colossians, or we could say the whole Bible, but let's just say in Colossians, yeah. anywhere in here, does, does it say, now that you know Christ has forgiven you all your sins, you now need to forgive yourself? It doesn't actually say that. That's, mm. that's never the step that the New Testament takes. But what it does do is it, it does this. So verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth. In this, this is an application of the truth that Christ has uh, died. He's forgiven us all of our sins. We've been raised with him as well. And rather than going, right, Christ died, that's great. But what you need to do is do this other thing in between, which is forgive yourself and, you know, kind of uh, appease yourself as judge to make sure you've forgiven yourself enough. It doesn't say that at all. It's set your hearts on those things. Like, set mm -hmm. your minds on where Christ is now. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what Christ has done. Uh, on who you now are in Christ, which specifically is, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So the people who are wrestling through this, I need to forgive myself. This, we need to look outside of ourselves and look to Christ, because actually, if we're Christian, our, our lives are now hidden with Christ in God. That's that's who we are now. Yeah. We're not one who's trying to banish our own darkness. Mm. We're one who's been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son whom he loves. Like we've been radically changed. So this isn't an internal journey that needs to happen in me uh, inside of forgiving myself. This is Paul saying, well, set your minds on what Christ has done. Set your minds on the gospel. Look what he's done. Look who you are now. Yeah. And isn't that so much more liberating? Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what I need yeah. to do is I need to believe what Christ has done. I need to believe the gospel. Uh, something that, that struck me guys I would like to hear what you what you think is that there were some people saying well the Bible might not say specifically that you need to forgive yourself but that doesn't mean uh, that we shouldn't do it okay. or yeah the Bible might not mention it 
but it's still a really important thing that we really need to do. So have you guys got any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go to uh, to Timothy. I thought you might. <laughs> go on then, Matt. Because if it was important, right, then it would have been mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. Because, cause, I mean, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So, I mean, if self-forgiveness was important, then it would have been mentioned in the scripture. Because otherwise we're actually saying, well, this important thing isn't in the Bible and it actually lessens the actual usefulness of the Bible in that extent by making that claim. Mm. Um, so I, I think that, and also, um, again, what we've been saying earlier, well, who, who makes you a better judge than God? Like, uh, actually, we need to rest on what Christ has done. I, I'm, I believe it was Robert McShane who was saying, for every look you take at yourself, take ten looks at Christ. I mean, if you're looking at your own sin and your own work and your own like failures and you're not looking at Christ then actually you're you're forgetting the Saviour. You're you're forgetting mm. his work and what he's done and you're actually taking from his glory. Yeah, let's go it, to the, the first that. thing that you said there, Matt. I was thinking exactly the same verses <laughs> in two times three And uh, like that I think that's really the the big question here. Mm. That the kind of the the elephant in the room in that Facebook comment section was, do we actually think that the Bible is sufficient? Mm -hmm. So has God given us everything that we need for life and godliness in the Bible? Uh, or is it is it missing stuff? So we need to put this extra thing in here. Mm. And if we, uh, to the degree that you need to do this. Now, obviously the Bible doesn't say like, you know, uh, you, sh you should have barbecues uh, <laughs> and invite your friends around. It doesn't say that, does it? And that, that doesn't mean we don't do it. Uh, but the, the question is, do we make barbecues an essential part of Christian living? So that if you want to live well as a Christian, you need to have barbecues as a church. Mm. Or like, no. now it's, it's a shame that it doesn't, <laughs> but it, it doesn't say that, does it? No. And no. just in the same way, like it, it doesn't say if you want to live well as a Christian, if you want to have a healthy Christian life, you need to forgive yourself. It doesn't say that. I think it's important. It's an important distinction on things that the Bible doesn't mention because there are there are things that 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 it, the Bible could have mentioned but doesn't like things like the structure of uh, service in the early church. Yeah. And I think had they put in the Bible, right? Okay, so you know, first we like sang these songs, and then like we did this, and then we did that, and um, and it always took place inside someone's house. Yeah. And you know, then I think the church could have been really crippled by the the idea that no matter which culture they're going to, and which whichever sort of setting they're in, that they have to do it in the exact same way that they've always done it, because it's in the Bible and that's how the early right, church yeah, did it. Yeah. So I think it's it's really important sometimes what the Bible decides not to say, so that uh, so that we don't get hung up on it. Yeah, that's that's and it, so exactly, that we, yeah. we remain sort of adaptable to to you know the 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 work that that God set us about, and I think. God was as deliberate with what he did put in the Bible as what with what he didn't. Yeah. And there's stuff that wouldn't have been, you know, wrong to do, but maybe in the Bible as you know, if it was in there then as Christians we could get too concerned with it. Yeah, and that and that's the step, isn't it? It's if if God in his wisdom hasn't decided to put it there because we affirm that like humans wrote it, but that fundamentally God inspired it. It's, it's mm. God breathed. Yeah. Uh, if God hasn't decided to put it there, it's not something that we have to know. Yeah. yeah. To follow Christ, to love love Christ well, to live in the freedom that Christ has bought for us, and mm -hmm. I think that's really one of the issues that, yeah. that basically, if we if we say that uh, people need have to go through a process of self forgiveness, and that's kind of central to how you uh, manage yeah manage your emotions, how you live as a Christian, mm -hmm. then what we're saying is well actually the, the Bible's not sufficient. It hasn't God hasn't given us enough. He, God yeah. missed this bit out that he should yeah. have told us and and I think that's actually the biggest that's the bigger issue yeah. and yeah. so uh, anybody who's listening to this I would I'd encourage you to just be thinking to yourself like like my my loving heavenly father who cares for me I know he cares for me because look what he did like look what he did in giving Christ on the cross uh, he he has spoken clearly to you uh, do you think he's a good enough father that he will have told you everything that you need to know uh, related to your forgiveness any it really has like absolutely everything you need to know so that you could live a full life in christ mm -hmm. and so I, I just think that's such an important thing that this this kind of highlights as well yeah. mm -hmm. right i think we should chill out now yeah and call it a day because it's been a long one hasn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should we didn't introduce everybody oh. ben good job man. Right. ben matt 
Second yeah. shout out for Matt today, Stu. Hey guys, thanks a lot for joining us, and we'll do another vlog at some point. Cheers, bye. Cheers, bye. bye. bye.